Hey guys, it's Corey with 10 Best Ones. And today we've decided to review the five best options for you. If you'd like to see their price and find out more information, you can check out the links in the description down below. Let's get started. Moving up, we have the most versatile model out there. Let's take a look. Number 5. Canon 80D The Canon 80D is a mid-range DSLR that was released in 2016 intended for photographers who want a more advanced camera than an entry-level Canon Rebel series. The Canon 80D sits near the top of a large number of entry-level DSLRs that Canon makes. It has a 1.6x APS-C crop sensor, the same size as that found on Canon Rebel cameras and Canon's more advanced 7D series. The 80D is the successor to the Canon 70D, adding a newer sensor and more advanced autofocus capabilities. Specifically, the 80D has a 24 megapixel sensor with improved ISO performance, while the 70D had an older 20 megapixel sensor. The 80D also has a 45 point autofocus system, all of which are cross type, rather than its 19 points or also cross type on the 70D, a significant improvement for photographers who need a wider autofocus coverage and a better ability to track subjects. As a whole, the Canon 80D handles very well. For advanced users in particular, the camera is very functional and easy to use, giving off a sense of solidity and thoughtful design. It isn't missing any buttons that you would expect to see on a camera of this class, and Canon's menu system is still, in my opinion, among the best you'll find on a camera today. Video files will be disappointed that the 80D doesn't offer 4K video, but the 80D brings an improved version of the 70D's excellent dual pixel AF system. That technology translates to smoother and more accurate autofocus when you're shooting video. The Canon EOS 80D is great for photographers who want to step up from Canon's Rebel line, as well as 70D owners who want to upgrade to a much better AF system. Next up, we have a model which gives you the best value for your money. Number 4. Panasonic Lumix G85 the Panasonic G85 is Panasonic's latest DSLR mid-range mirrorless camera and it offers numerous high-end features, borrowing quite a few from the earlier GH4 flagship model. The G85 gained some notable upgrades, particularly regarding the camera body and 4K video, yet without abandoning the mid-range price point of its predecessor. We were very impressed by its overall performance and capabilities during our lab and real-world testing. The most significant changes have taken place around the back of the camera, although even these have been limited to a few cosmetic changes and some repositioning of controls. Options that have been revised include the switch used to alternate between focusing modes as well as the button that releases the flash from the top plate, which is now to the side of the viewfinder. In terms of display and visibility, the LCD screen does very well. It's detailed and displays good contrast, and its viewing angle is very good. One thing that does affect both the viewfinder and the LCD screen, however, are minor artifacts when shooting video, regardless of resolution. These don't appear in recorded footage, but they're particularly visible when capturing detailed subjects and those with defined edges. As we've come to expect from 4K-enabled Panasonic cameras, video quality is very pleasing. 4K footage is detailed and movement is recorded smoothly, and while some rolling shutter is present when the camera is panned across the scene, this is generally well controlled. Full HD footage is a little softer by comparison, so it's best to record 4K footage if memory card space permits, as this appears much crisper when viewed on a non-4K display. The image stabilization system has a noticeable effect on smoothness too. The Panasonic Lumix G85 may not be the most radical upgrade we've seen in recent times, but there's still an awful lot to like about it. This next pick is one of the lightest models out there. Let's take a look. Number 3. Sony Alpha A6400 For bloggers, vloggers and independent content creators, the Sony A6400 is a dream. Its still image quality is very good, its 4K video is even better, and its 180 degree screen and eye detect AF are perfect for single-handed video capture. But this is a specific market, and for regular stills photographers, its high-tech image capture is poor consolation for its 5-year-old design and limited external controls. I should also mention that this camera is very lightweight, and you can take it almost everywhere. The A6400 is the latest in a long line of A6000 series cameras. The original A6000 from 2014 is still on sale at very low prices, 
But while its resolution is the same as the latest models, its video capabilities have fallen way behind. There's also an A6300, a relatively short-lived model that was joined in just a few months by the more powerful A6500, which is still on sale and still the only camera in this series to have in-body image stabilization. In effect, the A6400 replaces the A6300, joining this group of cameras above the long-running A6000 and below the A6500, which although it's been improved on by the A6400 in a couple of areas, is still Sony's top APS-C mirrorless camera. It's good to see a new model joining the Sony APS-C mirrorless range, which was starting to feel a little neglected, but what we really wanted to see is the long-rumoured new high-end Sony A7000 model. The layout and feel of the Sony Alpha A6400 breaks no new ground as it looks and handles like almost every other A6000 series camera. Real-time IAF improves on this system by making it more accurate and easier to use. Trained via artificial intelligence, the camera automatically detects eyes when they're present and will switch to real-time tracking, which can recognize various different objects to continue following subjects if they turn around or their eyes are otherwise obscured. As you'd expect, the A6400 offers a solid 4K video mode. Results are quite good with very accurate colors, and while the sensor is prone to rolling shutter with fast camera moves, we didn't encounter the issue very often in normal use. Before we talk about the best model overall, let's look at the runner-up for this list. Number two, Fujifilm X-T4. The Fujifilm X-T4 is the company's latest high-end photo and video APS-C mirrorless camera. It brings in-body stabilization, faster shooting, improved autofocus, and a larger battery to the already very capable X-T3. Fujifilm says that the X-T4 is a sister model to the X-T3 rather than a replacement, which is born out of the specs and the pricing. It's a 26-megapixel camera capable of 20fps shooting and 4K capture at up to 60p. In use, we found it offers distinct benefits over both the X-T3 and the older X-H1, and although the autofocus performance isn't cutting edge, it offers one of the best stills and video options you can buy. As with previous Fujifilm cameras, the main menu is pretty well laid out, with icons down the left-hand side that break most of the options into logical sections. The setup tab at the end of the menu is somewhat long and congested, but it is at least broken into named subsections to help you find the setting you're looking for. There's a customizable My Menu tab if you find yourself regularly needing to access settings that you've not assigned to a button, or the Q menu, but we rarely found this necessary. In many respects, the X-T4's video spec is very similar to that of the X-T3. However, the provision of in-body stabilization and a larger battery significantly changes the way it can be used. For the most part, the X-T4's video capture options match those of the X-T3, giving you some really high-end capture options and excellent image quality. On this camera, you gain the option to record the more web-friendly AAC audio in the camera's 8-bit H.264 modes rather than linear PCM. 4K video can be captured for up to around 30 minutes or 20 minutes for 50 and 60p shooting. It's a really good stills camera, it's a really, really good video camera, and the thing it excels at is switching back and forth between the two. Finally, the next model is the best overall. From us, it gets a perfect score in all categories. Number one, Panasonic Lumix GH5S. As a 4K video camera, the GH5S is extremely powerful and extremely good value. Our real-world tests indicate its high ISO performance still lags slightly behind its bigger sensor rivals, but professionals will love its high frame rates, 10-bit 4-2-2 recording and high bit rates. It's not all good, though. The lack of sensor-based stabilization will put many people off, and the 10 megapixel resolution is just too low for it to be a convincing stills camera. For videographers, the GH5 specs are sensational, though. It's only when you drill down into the technical details that the difference between this and regular cameras that shoot 4K video start to become apparent. For stills photographers, it's a different story, and the biggest turnoff for stills shooters will be the 10.2 megapixel resolution. That's about half the resolution of what most photographers today would consider a working minimum, though it's still enough for a top quality A4 print or a full page in a magazine. The GH5S can also shoot continuously at 12fps in AFS mode, with the focus locked onto that first frame, or 8fps with continuous autofocus. That's if you're happy with 12-bit RAW files, though. If you want the extra tonal depth of 14-bit RAW files, which is generally what high-end stills cameras shoot, the frame rate drops to 11fps with single-shot AF, or 7fps with continuous autofocus. 
Given the camera's formidable 4K processing power, which will come to shortly, that's mildly disappointing. However, Panasonic does leverage this processing power in its 4K photo mode, where the GH5S can capture 4K stills at an impressive 60fps. These stills are around 8 megapixels in size, and while that's a big drop on one of Panasonic's 20 megapixel models, like the Lumix G9, the drop from 10 to 8 megapixels on the GH5S is pretty small, which makes this 4K photo mode a very interesting proposition for action photography. Overall, it really is the best camera for video in 2020. Buying Guide Firstly, Sensor. For best results, the sensor resolution must be at least twice the video standard's resolution. That is to say, for a 720p camcorder, the sensor resolution should be at least 1.8 megapixels. For 1080p, it should be at least 4 megapixels, and the same goes for each chip on a 3-chip model. Higher resolutions will most likely not improve the video, however they may give higher still photo quality. When it comes to the types of sensors, most camcorders employ CMOS sensors, the latest development in CMOS being BSI technology, or backside illuminated, which tends to give better results in low-light situations. Secondly, data rates. Just like your cell phone data plan, you don't get something for nothing, and even though capturing high-resolution imaging isn't generally a problem these days, when you start recording minutes of video at 30fps or 1800 frames per minute, this can take quite the toll on the camera. Even shooting at lower resolutions of HD and 4K when compared to still photo resolution, there are many issues that can pop up, such as overheating and your camera shutting down or dropping frames if your recording media is not up to snuff. Thirdly, usage. This is a big question, and since it's hard to constrain this down to just a few popular uses, we want you to at least keep in your awareness what you think you'll be using your camera for. Some frequent uses we've seen and their answers include filming sports, grab a good AF system, especially if the sport involves a lot of movement, filming music videos, if outdoors, check for low light sensitivity, YouTube videos, any will do, especially if you're vlogging, and more. And lastly, resolution. The resolution indicates how many pixels are in the footage, with more pixels offering greater clarity and detail. Where just a few years ago the decision was between standard definition and high definition, the question is now high definition or 4K. 4K resolution means the longest side has about 4,000 pixels, and that's nearly four times the resolution of HD. Most HD cameras have a 1080p resolution, though there's still a few that use the lower quality 720p. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions related to these products, you can leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.